G'day fellas. Welcome to another video on the improvement checklist. I asked earlier in the week, what did you want to see next added to the Aussie Drongo improvement checklist? And overwhelmingly, the response was, you want to see videos focused on every sieve and their standard land and water opening. So today we're going to be taking a look at Sweden and we're going to be talking about the standard build order that you have for both land and water because it is the same build order. Let's get into it. So we're going to start off the game. We're going to move all of our villagers onto the food crates. We're going to move them manually. And then we're going to get our explorer out to explore. We're not going to be picking up our treasures here because I want to show you that everything that we're doing can be done without treasures and that treasures are only going to enhance the speed at which you do things with. Let's get to it. A little bit of miss micro right there. B bit of miss macro, bit of miss uh, pathing, I guess you could probably say the best way. Now moving a villager out. This villager is going to be doing our herding. Going to get this bison in, hopefully under right under here. Let's send our explorer out. Get him on a shift click pathway. Hello. So we're going to shoot this bison here, just to make sure that all of our uh, torps are able to gather up. So we've got the, our torps nice and close to our bison. They're going to be able to collect it up. Uh, I did send my explorer out on a shift click pathway. I didn't send him in that direction. So you know, definitive edition just doing. Classic definitive edition things there, but that's all right. Uh, not to worry. So now with our torps up, we're just going to make sure that we're gathering with them. You can see that there's this little green circle around them. Very important. It's going to have an increased gather rate. All of our starting hunts, we're going to try and aim to have them all killed underneath our torps so that all of them are going to be able to gather up. All right, so we found an 85 wood treasure. Now, normally we would take this very, very happily. I'm not going to take it. I'm actually just going to kill the guardians on it. So the very first guardian, I'm, I'm just going to be shooting. And the second guardian, I'm going to be meleeing down. Now, I'm just going to do this just to grab the XP. And at the same time, just making sure that we, uh, uh, we, we don't take it so that we don't uh, hurt what we're doing here. So now I'm using this torp. I'm going to kill this bison. It's going to send this bison behind the torp to the front. Going to move some villagers out over onto this top as well. So we have we would have picked up that treasure right here. Lost about 180 hit points. Not a big deal. And then so this final bison, we can just kill it now. So just going like this, shooting it, and then moving the villagers into the town center and then popping them out on top. Sending three villagers as our first shipment from the home city. Another treasure over here. 30% explorer HP. Not too bad. So we're going to be aging up. Ideally, you want to be aging up with 14 villagers with Sweden. It's really important to be aging up with 14 villagers. But typically, if you don't get a food treasure, it's very, very hard to do. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of play it by ear, see what happens if we do idle a little bit. That'll be okay. We're not too fussed. I'm going to transition villagers over slowly. You can see that this bison is, is getting less and less. And one of the things that happens, uh, you'll see it on the checklist, is that you need to transition your villagers onto different carcasses depending on how much health are on those carcasses or how, how much uh, food is remaining on those carcasses. So now you can see we've got that 14 villager that's about to pop out, but we've still got a little bit of time before we uh, actually um, age up. So we're just going to chuck another villager in the queue. Uh, normally, if you can find like a 70 food treasure, it's not too bad because a 70 food treasure would mean that you're only idling about seven seconds at this point here. But because we never we didn't find a treasure, we're going to be going up with 15 villagers and that's okay. Don't, don't feel like you have to always go up with 14 villagers. Uh, but we'll see if we can get that idolless, um, see if we can get that idolless 15 villager. There it is. So going up with the two settlers and the two cows, normally the best thing to do. And what you're going to do is now you're going to start sending out villagers to every point on the map, uh, ideally over to your opponent's side. So on, on Great Plains, you get one coin mine that spawns on one side of the map and then the other side there's a whole bunch of coin mines so that's the first thing that you're going to do you, if you run into any hunts like this don't be afraid just to shoot them back and then keep on walking out with your first 135 coin uh, wood you're going to drop down torps in your base it's really important that you drop these torps down in your base instead of dropping them out on expansions really really important and i'll, I'll talk more about that later so this village is going to go and find a coin mine we can see that we've already got another coin mine down here as well and so with this villager here, this villager is going to drop down our next torp. So we're going to get our fourth torp down now. So we're looking for that coin mine. We see, we spot the explorer. We just move away from it. We've got enough food now for a villager. So we'll make sure we queue that one up as well. And just keep in mind, we're just looking. There's that coin mine. So we're going to go send out a herding villager now. So this one here that's closest to this herd, we're going to shift click that hunt. And now we're saving up for our barracks. We're going to set our... Uh, our waypoint for our um, cows and our villagers to this point right here. This is going to send our cows right into here. 
We're now herding in this one. We could probably go herd in this hunt as well. Uh, not too bad with Sweden, just to get a couple of hunts in under your town center, make it nice and safe. So when when we age up, we're going to be sending in 700 wood. We're going to be dropping down a racks with two villages and then grabbing these two villages and moving them over onto wood as well. So now our cows, you need to keep your cows to war as close as you can towards this coin mine. Really, really important. You want to make sure it's as close as possible to that coin mine because you're going to delete it as soon as your barracks gets created. Really important because we're going to be training up those Corollians, getting them out on the map. We are playing up against the British, so you guys know exactly what that's like. So now getting these guys back over. So training a Corollian and deleting a cow straight away. Four Torps gathering this up. If you take a look at the food gather rate, they are all gathering an accelerated rate because of these, uh, because of this. All, all of them are gathering from it. Three villagers onto the big crate, one villager onto each of the smaller crates, and still training those Corollians now and expanding out on the map. We've got those villagers. We might even send this villager out just to go expand out over here. Training up some Corollians here. You can see that we're, we're going idle a little bit, but it's more important that we get our Corollians out uh, more than anything. We can also drop down Torps in base as well if you've got a little bit of extra uh, a little bit of extra wood. Next card that's coming in is your Ironworks. You can afford to go idle here. It's not a big deal. So now going idle or training another villager. And so making sure that we herd our hunts to our Torps, very important. Uh, some Torps just won't have any hunts whatsoever. Uh, and that's okay. So next, Corollian being trained, and we're going to delete this cow again. So that's going to be, you know, uh, th the way that we do it. And shooting our bison with our torps. Dropping down our next expansion. Uh, so we, we tried our best to herd this. It didn't, didn't work that well. And once again, continuing to train those Corollians. You can see we're at 6 minutes and 20 at the moment. Getting out our second batch of Corollians. Uh, we're in quite a decent position right now. There's a little bit of a lull that you have uh, in between your second and third batch of Corollians. Um, but uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue now, once again, shooting that in. And one of the things you can do is you can just murder all of the bison that you like. Not a big deal, uh, especially if they're your opponent's bison. So if, if they are your opponent's bison, do not be afraid to just kill all the bison at all because it means that... Uh, whilst they're going to decay, they're your opponent's bison, so it doesn't really matter. Otherwise, they're going to run away. So now that you've sent Ironworks in, the next card that you're going to be sending in is Blueberries. And keep in mind, this is your build order that you're going to be using in almost 100% of games uh, you'll be using this. Whether you drop down a stable, whether you drop down a Rax, doesn't really uh, matter. But ideally, this is the build order that you're going to, be, uh, going to be using. And now we're in a position where we can fill out all of the Torps on this coin mine here. Yeah, get it. Uh, we can move this villager on to another coin mine. So whether that's this coin mine down here, we might run into a coin mine down here as well. Uh, but continuing to train Corollians, we're now up to 15 Corollians at this point. We've gone idle for a little bit. Maybe, maybe get in these herds as well. And that's essentially it. That's how you do uh, the standard Swedish build order for 99% of Sweden games. You can see that when Blueberries comes in, we're sitting on 180 Torp population at the moment. Ideally, what you want to be doing is Torping your opponent's side of the map. Leave these spots on... on If you've got any coin mines in your base other than the initial one that you need to do four Torps on, probably best to leave them. You don't need to put Torps on them. Just because if your opponent sieges down these Torps, it's going to allow you to rebuild them in a safe spot in your base eventually. Other than that, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. If you have, I encourage you to leave a like. If you think I've missed something, leave a comment and thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.